So uh, while we were on break, I played around with this a little bit to try and figure out that issue that we were having with that warped corner. Um, so I think I've resolved it in uh, this in this approach. So um, take a look at the one on the left and the one on the right. I know it's really, really hard for you to see um, with the projector because the projector kind of makes everything shine real crazy. But right here in that spot, Notice how it's like it's dark here, and then it gets bright, and then it's a yeah. That's that's because there's a pit somewhere, um, versus the one on the left where it has a very smooth gradient bright spot from this point, right? That's what you want to see when you bake it out into Rhino. So, um, what I did to generate that, let me get rid of this extra geometry. Um, what I did to generate that is I inserted deconstruct B rep into here um, and then I just I, I used my edges instead so I plugged all the edges in um, to, to this configuration and it just it built the whole thing off of edges rather than rather than um, the curve the the joined curve or beer up curve okay so it created something that was a lot smoother um, although there's an extra geometry in there I need to figure out why. Uh, let's see, offset curve edges. Oh, we don't um, we don't want to use ruled surf here. We probably want boundary line like curve. Why is there a line like curve in that? There should not be a line like curve. Okay, well that's an error. It didn't give me an issue. I don't know why it's doing that, but maybe this will produce the same thing. Uh, no, that's creating something else. All right, well, um, if it's not giving us an issue, it's not giving us an issue, so let me just verify this. I'll bake that. Seems to be okay. Oh, I see. All right, it created it created this little piece. I don't know why. Um, all right, well, I'll keep troubleshooting this, but in the meantime, it's generally working out well for us, and, and this should be okay. Um, we'll just have to get rid of that. Do any of you guys... If you insert this um, in this configuration, not have five surfaces come out. Do any of you only get four? Yeah. Yeah. You only get four. You should only get four. Four surfaces. So the guys, think of it this way, right? I have. Um, poly curve up here that I deconstructed into four edges, right? Okay. So I have, I have my top four curves and I have my bottom four curves and I'm essentially lofting them together, right? And, and theoretically it should only create four surfaces, but for some reason this one's creating five. Because I think you oh. modified it, right? What do you mean? Like mine just has four because I didn't even scale the, the top. Oh. You didn't scale the top. Yeah, I didn't know. Well. But you did, right? Yeah, but it should still only be four curves. I don't know where. I don't know why it's creating a, a line-like curve. So it seems like some of you only get four. I got five. Five. All right. I'll dig into this at some point. I hope. But anyway. Um, so so guys, here's here's the essence of of what's happening, right? We have we have our superstructure we'll call it right the the core and then we have our floor plates and now we're starting to develop what we would call a datum plane to generate a facade system okay and a datum plane is nothing more than a surface upon which other geometry is going to be built and referenced make sense 
Okay, so um, I'm going to keep it real simple here today, and I'm going to show you the, the subdivision of one of these sides so that you can start to understand how facade development is going to occur. Um, <clears throat> let's use this ruled surf, um, and I'm going to generate um, a facade on one side. Um, so let me get... Let's see, ruled surf, there are a bunch of them. So I'm going to use deconstruct brep. Actually, no, I'll just list item first, sorry. Um, let me go to set list, <coughs> list item. And I'll plug that in here and make a slider from zero to three because there are four sides. Okay, so I select that and it is scrolling through, letting me pick one, why is it? All right, well, let me turn some of this stuff off then. Too much geometry, I have too much stuff on apparently. There we go, now I can see. So this is what I'm selecting, I just need to pick one, so um, not that one, because that's the broken one, not that one. All right, we can work on that one, okay? So here's the gist of what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to we're going to start to look at creating depth and everything like that. But in essence, once you once you get to a point where you're trying to generate a facade, um, you need to think cleverly about the things that you're trying to to create. Okay. So first and foremost, um, the the level of subdivisions that you do. There are two kinds. You could subdivide the entire facade. Um, completely separate from the floor plates, or you can subdivide the facade exactly where the floor plates are. Um, I will show you both, but I'm going to start with the simpler version first, and then I'll do a separate video on um, the, the floor plates one, because that's a little more complex. But anyway, how do you think we're going to subdivide this if we don't care about the floor plates? How do we subdivide it into panels? Divide domain squared. Divide. Right, yeah. Divide domain squared is the one. So we go to math, domain, divide domain squared. Then you guys know that this is the golden triangle. Um, so we're going to go to isotrim. Plug all those in. And you can see what it's starting to do. Clearly, that's not the number of subdivisions we want. So I'll make a slider from 0 to 20. <coughs> Um, start them somewhere near the middle, and I'll put U and V, and then just keep subdividing it until I get to something that I think is appropriate. So I want them to be somewhat rectilinear, like that. Okay? Does that make sense? Uh, you can't really see it that well. There you go. Something like that. Yeah? No? So, um, I'll give, well, actually, let me give you a minute to, <clears throat> okay, guys, um, something that I want to point out to you is that technically, once you have a warped surface like this, right, it's parabolic in nature, or hyperbolic in nature, parabolic in nature, um, the, 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 quad, the quadrilateral system tends to break down. Technically, you can't accomplish this with a flat surface unless it's triangulated. So I'm just throwing that out there as a caution. And we're going to study that a good bit as we start to do facade systems and, and logic and stuff like that. But for us right now, we're going to just kind of deal with it. I just want to show you and communicate a certain idea. Anyway, um, so these panels, the, everything that you've learned so far, it's exactly the same thing, except now we have a panel that's actually on a building, right? It's no longer just an abstract exercise. This is a facade. So um, we can we can do a bunch of crazy things. We can scale them. We can make them different sizes. We can create frames with them. We can uh, build geometry within them. Um, we can triangulate it. So um, we're gonna we're gonna look at a bunch of different systems to break it down. But simply put, um, I'm just gonna kind of modify a geometry within the system itself. So using deconstruct VREP, 
I'm going to grab each of the panels. <clears throat> um, and then just to make it interesting, I'm going to create a bit of a, a wild geometry in it. Um, well, yeah, well, I, I'll just create, I guess, an ellipse, right? So I'll map elliptical forms within each of these frames. Um, so I'm going to take these vertices and notice how, and this is where you guys are going to be paying a lot of attention to um, your systems. Each of these points are packaged into groups of four, right? By now, that should be a familiar concept. And um, I'm going to use a curve to map to all four of those points and return it on itself so that it creates an ellipse in each of these frames. Um, so I'll go to curve and spline and I think I'm going to use interpolate and I'll just plug that into V. Okay, that's what it gives me here. Actually, I think interpolate's not going to be the one I want. I think what we'll try it, but I think what I really want is an herbs curve. Anyway, um so something you need to know about these things is that they are systems that can be modified. They have settings, just like your commands in Rhino. So um, the degree is how accurate to these points um, or how tightly the curves are going to be generated with the points. Um, it's a little more um, applicable with NURBS curve. You'll see what I mean in a bit. But um, we also have whether or not it's a periodic curve. If it um, That one, I believe, is... Uh, not style, should return on itself. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go to params and input, and I'm gonna get a Boolean toggle. I'm gonna place that on P, right? Because it says, th this little thing right here, A, it says false, so you understand that it's, it's a Boolean function, but also that little symbol, that's a Boolean symbol. So we can um, trigger that to true, and what it's gonna do is that, and it's going to um, it circumscribe a circle around those four points. Okay, so I pulled the wrong one because I want them to actually be inside. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to generate instead is a NURBS curve. So I'll go to spline, um, NURBS curve, and they're very, very similar. Um, it has a V, it has uh, for vertices, the degree for how tightly to the points it's going to generate, and then whether or not it's periodic. So I'll do the same thing. Yes, I want it to be periodic. I want to plug in all my vertices. And instead of that, we get this. So in case you guys are curious, now um, we are one step closer to that. Right? Sort of, kind of, ish. Anyway. Um, so I'm just I'm trying to emulate how you think logically through the systems of these really awesome buildings that you're going to be studying in the coming weeks. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so the degree changes a few things. Um, it's not really it's not really essential, but you can change it. I actually don't know all of the rule sets for degree, but plug that in and it needs to be at least one. And one creates a frame. It just goes from point to point to point. Two is your um, next Titus geometry. Um, so that's the one that's going to be coincident at the tangent points. And then three is what you saw before. That was the default value. Um, and I think it only goes up to three, in fact. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's what we created is just a series of curves. Those are uh, just curves. Um, we are able, I think we can transition these directly to be surfaces. Oh, no, they're non planar. That's right. Um, and they're actually on the surface. So I think what I want to do is use these curves to trim holes out of the, the form. Yeah. Yeah, they're non planar. How would I do that with a planar surface? I think we could do boundary. Let me go to surface and try boundary surfaces. That won't do it because it's not planar either. Um, I need to think about that. I don't know how to make a non-planar elliptical closed curve into a surface. That's weird. All right, anyway, um, 
So I'm going to take these curves because they are exactly coincident, or they should be exactly coincident with those panels. Let's try it. Um, they might not be actually, but let's go to transform. I'm going to go to, I'm sorry, not that. Go to um, intersect. We're going to do a uh, two sets of planar closed curves. No, let's do, oh, you know what? We might not be able to do that either. Let's try, um, You're at curve. No. Yeah, split a surface with a bunch of curves. I think that's what we want. Surface split. Let's try that. What's F giving us? Fragments. That's weird. Um, so let's put our surface in, which would be these, and our curves in, which is that. N equals 2. Okay. N equals two. So if each one, yeah, okay. All right, so um, with these lists, they are broken out into separate tree branches, and each one um, has both an inside and an outside. So we need to, to grab each one of those individually, right? So in order to do that, we just go to set, list, list item, and it lets you grab one of those systems. Right? This defaults to zero, which is the first item in the list. Um, so let's go back to where we were. That's this stuff right here. Turn all that off, and what you get is this. Does that make sense? Yeah, we're getting to some cool stuff, I think. All right, let me clean this up a little bit for you. Okay. What questions do you have? None? Huh? Yeah, you can do it to all four. Um, if you wanted to do it to all four, you would just take out this list item and you just apply it to that one. But I'm not going to do that because I have that one little sliver, which is screwing up the thing. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, other questions? I have one if I have one. Like, could you make, like, um, some big, some small? Yeah, yeah, anytime. How do you think you would do it? Random. If you wanted to make some big and some small, how would you do it? Jitter. You could use jitter, but before jitter, you would have to use what? Serious number. Maybe cold pattern if you want to leave some there and get rid of some altogether. But, huh? No, it's a serious oh, number. Uh, tree? What makes things smaller and bigger? Scale. 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 Yeah. You put in scale. You scale. You create your logic for which ones are going to be scaled and when. And you might use jitter. You might use uh, repeat pattern. That kind of stuff, right? It's the same stuff that you guys experienced in the first couple weeks. All right. So um, I'm going to stop this video, and then we're going to go into actually aligning this thing um, to the actual floor plates, which is hugely important.